uh, this meeting, the Security Council uh, will hear a briefing by Mr. Hedi Anabi, a special representative of the Secretary General and head of the United Nations Stabilization Mission in Haiti. I now give him the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I'm pleased to be back in the Security Council and to join this discussion of the work of MINUSTA. The wide participation in today's debate underscores the high level of international commitment to the stabilization process in Haiti. It builds upon the Security Council's visit to Haiti from 11 to 14 March and on the visit of the Secretary General and former President Clinton that took place on 9 and 10 March. We hope that the international community will make a further effort two weeks from now at the 14 April conference on Haiti that will be hosted by the Inter-American Development Bank in Washington, D.C. Sustained international engagement is critical to enable Haiti to take advantage of a unique moment of opportunity. The country now has its best chance in decades to break from the destructive cycles of the past and to move towards a brighter future. But it can only do so with the continued strong support of external partners. The Secretary General has suggested that in order to consolidate Haiti's stability, progress must be made in addressing five interlinked challenges. First, political dialogue, dialogue including elections. Second, extension of state authority. Third, strengthening security. Fourth, rule of law and human rights. And five, socioeconomic development. The report of the Secretary General now before the members of the Security Council summarizes advances that have taken place in each of these areas over the past six months. In order to provide a context for today's discussions, I would like to update and supplement this analysis, focusing on recent developments, key tasks that remain, and where the further assistance of the international community is indispensable. First, political dialogue and elections. The resolution of political differences through dialogue remains the cornerstone of advancement in all other areas. There have been some positive developments in this necessarily Haitian-led process. In the aftermath of last year's hurricanes, we witnessed a new potential for cooperation among representatives from across Haiti's political spectrum and between the various institutions of governance, the private sector, and civil society. Last December, the government and parliament adopted for the first time a joint legislative agenda. The establishment by President Preval at the beginning of this year of a series of broad-based commissions on key national issues represents a further effort to promote dialogue and collaboration. Council members will recall that they met with the leaders of some of these commissions during their visit. This progress, however, remains fragile. There is a risk of renewed conflict among political institutions and between the executive and legislative branches of government. These tensions are often related to personal ambitions and fed by the scourge of corruption which the government is seeking to curb. At this critical time, Haiti cannot afford the kind of discord that paralyzed the country for almost five months last year. It is essential that the Haitian leadership in the executive and legislative branches, in civil society and the private sector, rise to the challenge and work together constructively. The international community can and should contribute by demonstrating that it stands with those who seek collaboration and that it will hold accountable those who promote conflict and instability. The ongoing electoral process for renewal of one-third of the Senate which can reinforce political cooperation in the longer term, nonetheless has brought some additional strains in the short term. Over the past months, 
we saw considerable tensions related to participation in the polls. Today, however, the process is moving ahead. We hope that the Haitian people will take full advantage of this opportunity to make their voice heard and to select leaders with the necessary ethical and professional qualities. These elections are indispensable to permit the proper functioning of the parliament. It is therefore essential that they take place in a climate that is free from disruption or violence. At the same time, as mandated by the Security Council, MINUSTA is providing the necessary logistical and security support for the electoral process in close collaboration with the Haitian authorities. I am pleased to say that at this time, the first round of these elections appears to be broadly on track to take place on the 19th of April as envisaged although the timeline remains tight. Second, extension of state authority. As regards the extension of state authority, MINUSTA continues to assist the government to develop administrative capacity in areas that are related to the mandate at both the national and local level, drawing in particular on our civil affairs offices. This is a long-term process, but some progress is being made. An integrated border management strategy is beginning to take shape, including the revision of the Customs Code, whose adoption features on Haiti's joint legislative agenda. This effort has been complemented by the provision of, bil of bilateral funds to create necessary infrastructure along the border. We are also providing support to local administrations in the conduct of a number of basic tasks, including budget preparation. But it is clear that MINUSTA's efforts can barely begin to make a difference in enabling the state administration to respond to the needs of the population. We therefore welcome the bilateral and multilateral programs that have been launched to help build capacity in a number of ministries, and we hope that further efforts will be made along these lines. These efforts could be facilitated through the adoption by the government of a clear plan for strengthening public administration, drawing on existing, uh, on already existing blueprints. Third, strength, uh, strengthening security. The strengthening of Haiti's security structures represents a third area where there have been significant advances, but where further efforts are required. Over the past four years, Based on steadily increasing collaboration between MINUSTA and the Haitian authorities, Haiti has seen a remarkable improvement in its security situation. The dispersal of armed groups in rural areas in 2004 and 2005, and the dismantling of gangs in urban strongholds in 2006 and 2007 were followed over the second half of last year by increased effectiveness in curbing kidnapping which was having a disproportionately demor demoralizing impact on the population. We are building on this progress with further initiatives to promote security in border areas and have complemented the deployment of troops along the land border with the Dominican Republic and along the coast with maritime and airborne patrolling. We hope that these latest efforts will be of assistance in promoting security throughout the Haitian territory and in deterring illicit trafficking activities. At the same time, we recognize that they, that, they cannot, that they cannot alone represent an effective response to the problem of trafficking, which constitutes a key threat to Haiti's stability. They must be reinforced through engagement by other countries within the region that can assist by sharing information, complementary patrolling, and as appropriate coordinated operations. Meanwhile, we are advancing with our programs to strengthen Haiti's own security capability. A class of 702 uh, Haitian police cadets graduated in February, making a total of more than 9,200 9, active police officers. The, tra the training of an additional 450 cadets was launched last December and recruitment for the next promotion is ongoing. It is essential that this space be maintained 
in order to reach the target envisaged in the Haitian police reform plan of 14,000 police officers by the end of 2011. We also continue to push forward with the, with the vetting process together with the Haitian police in order to ensure that those who are serving have the necessary professional standards and qualifications. Bilateral assistance has been made available to help meet a number of key needs in terms of infrastructure and equipment, but a lot more is needed. This progress is encouraging. At the same time, as was clear during the, ri the riots last April, uh, the riots last spring, and the hurricanes last summer, MINUSTA's uh, troops and police remain indispensable when a real crisis erupts. The country continues to face a number of threats, including a significant risk of civil unrest, reflecting Haiti's difficult living conditions and the continued presence on the ground of a number of potentially violent elements, including former gang members and, dis and discontented army veterans. These threats could be activated for political or criminal motivations or to inhibit reform programs that target corruption, smuggling, and trafficking. In this context, MINUSTA's security components are needed to promote a sense of security among the Haitian people, to deter spoilers, and to spare a still vulnerable Haitian police force from unmanageable challenges or setbacks that could deal a fatal blow to its morale and credibility. Fourth, rule of law and human rights. In the area of justice reforms, there has been progress towards the establishment of the key supervisory body, the Conseil Supérieur du Pouvoir Judiciaire. The Minister of Justice announced recently that the Conseil Supérieur would soon be installed subject to the outcome of the vetting process, which is almost complete. In the interim, an inspectorate, or inspection judiciaire, has been created within the Ministry of Justice in order to provide the necessary oversight of judges. The 12th March opening of the École de la Magistrature represented a further major development, and I would like to thank the members of the Security Council for their participation in this ceremony, which offered a clear indication of the importance they attach to the justice reform process. As regards corrections reform, there has been some progress in training corrections staff and in the rehabilitation of prisons. But the situation in Haiti's correction facilities remains unacceptable from the perspective of both human rights and security. It is critical that this process be given continued priority by, ha by Haiti's leadership and strong bilateral support. In the area of human rights, we are seeing historically remarkable levels of public debate and of respect for freedom of the press, as well as for civil liberties in general. We have also been encouraged by the broad interest of the government and of civil society in a human rights approach that integrates economic and social concerns. However, limited progress has been made in the strengthening of the office of the uh, the Office de Protection du Citoyen, the Office of the Ombudsman, which will play a critical role in ensuring the sustainability of human rights gains. Fifth and last, social and economic development. Mr. President, social, uh, social economic issues are not, of course, the core work of a peacekeeping operation. However, it remains clear that in Haiti, the promotion of security and development are very closely linked. The current levels of deprivation and poverty in the country are incompatible with durable stability. If we are to succeed in our efforts, it is essential that there be an improvement in people's daily lives, or at least a realistic hope of such an improvement. In this context, we have been deeply concerned over the deterioration of the socio-economic situation in 2008. The scope of the damage wrought by last summer's hurricanes is estimated at about a billion US dollars, or equivalent to 15% of Haiti's GDP. 
This has now been compounded by the global financial crisis, which in February, compared to the previous February, brought a 14% reduction in the remittances that constitute a lifeline for many Haitian families and represent nearly three times the figure for international assistance. In this context, we continue to believe that assistance must be directed in three broad areas. First, we believe that continued humanitarian relief is essential. Without it, many Haitians will have little to eat, no capacity to send their children to school, and no access to basic services. Second, it is critical to assist with early recovery, focusing on providing jobs while tackling urgently needed rehabilitation and reconstruction tasks that can also support longer-term development. We hope that more bilateral assistance can be provided, including with reference to the various projects that have been outlined in the post-disaster needs assessment conducted jointly by the government, the European Union, the World Bank, and the United Nations. Third, we continue to call for longer-term development, which depends upon the regeneration of private sector activity. The Growth and Poverty Re Reduction Strategy paper has had already helped to identify certain key priorities of the Haitian government for the future. Over the past few months, this has been helpfully supplemented by the work of Professor Collier, who has pointed out that Haiti offers real potential for investors, particularly in the area of garment manufacturing, take it, taking advantage of existing advantageous trade ag agreements. But Professor Collier also noted that in order to leverage this potential, certain conditions must be put in place. In particular, the enhancement of key roads and ports, the development of electricity, as well as the adoption of certain legislative and policy measures to create a truly investment-friendly environment. The realization of this program requires a renewed partnership between national authorities who must take the necessary decisions and international actors whose assistance is essential to undertake the required improvements in infrastructure as well as the private sector who will need to take advantage of these new opportunities. We earnestly hope that the 14 April Washington Conference may facilitate agreement upon such a forward-looking agenda based on mutual commitments and accountability. At the same time, we hope that participants may be able to help the government bridge a short-term requirement for budget support, which amounts to some, hundred and, uh, some $125 million for the current fiscal year. Mr. President, to conclude, visitors over the past month have underlined that Haiti is, is, at, a, is at a turning point and that this is the first time in many years that the country truly appears to be poised to make a break from a past of suffering, poverty, and violence towards a path of sustainable social and economic development. We share this analysis. We believe that Haiti has a real chance today of consolidating the stability that we have all worked hard to establish. But this can only happen with sustained and coordinated support for progress in all areas of stabilization, drawing on a strong partnership between Haitians, MINUSTA, the United Nations country team, and the wider international community. This is, of course, a difficult environment within which to ask for further assistance. However, at a time when so much has been achieved, there is a compelling logic for making an additional effort, one that will be relatively modest in absolute terms, but can make a, crit a critical difference in securing the investments made to date and, and can prevent the major costs that would be associated with any renewed decline or disorder. The international community has made a remarkable contribution in providing opportunity to Haiti. Our Haitian counterparts are showing today a clear determination to seize this chance. I hope that with the support of the Security Council, this partnership may be sustained to enable the efforts made to date to come to fruition and to place Haiti firmly on the path towards the better future that it has sought for so long. Thank you, Mr. President.